Now, all through in the previous videos, we were talking about the concept of control, right? Let us now see what control exactly means. There are two alternate criterions, okay? Two alternate criterions for the purpose of ascertaining whether or not control exists, right? The first one is direct or indirect ownership through subsidiaries of more than one half of the voting power. What does this mean? Let me show you a diagram which will help you to understand this concept a little better. Now this diagram basically is representative of the fact that let's say for example if we just look at this particular segment. Right? X limited has a subsidiary A limited, B limited, C limited, D limited. The assumption is that in respect of each one of them it owns more than one half of the voting power. Right? So this is basically a case of direct ownership. Right? But if you look at Y limited, X limited does not hold anything over here. Right? But its subsidiaries own 25, 25, 25 and 25 or in other words the entire 100% of the company Y limited. So X limited has control over A, B, C and D and A, B, C, D taken together have control over Y limited. So the case of Y limited is known as indirect control where you don't own more than one half of the voting power yourself but maybe your subsidiaries taken together own that voting power. There can be several variants for this also instead of this 25 it may be that X himself has 25% itself has sorry I should not be using the word himself right so that is what the meaning of direct and indirect control is right so coming back to our main point so if you own directly or indirectly right ownership of direct or indirect ownership through subsidiaries of more than one half of the voting power you may directly own that voting power or you may own it indirectly the way we saw in the other diagram or the second criterion is so if first criterion is satisfied you are a subsidiary right and the parent company is supposed to prepare CFS if it falls within the criteria that we saw earlier which was that it's a listed company and stuff right the second criteria is power to control the composition of board of directors or governing body of another company for obtaining economic benefit from its activity so let's say there are two companies again H and S this is the standard practice and that's what I'm even I'm using right H controls the composition of board of directors of S limited right now because H controls the composition of board of directors of S limited S becomes a subsidiary of H and H is supposed to prepare consolidated financial statements if this ownership of control is for obtaining economic benefits. If you are doing just this for charity, then that is not covered, right? But if it is for the purpose of some obtaining some kind of economic benefits, then it is covered and you have to prepare CFS. This point is very important. If definition as per the law is not satisfied, which is either A or B, even if it otherwise qualifies as a practical control, it is not relevant for CFS preparation. So let's say in a company which is having 100% shareholding, H limited held 35, but anywhere between 35 to 49%, right? And S limited or the, sorry, the outside shareholders, they own the balance. Now because H limited is a single largest shareholder it practically has control over the subsidiary or S limited let me not use the word subsidiary right so practically you are controlling it but because the law says you have to have more than one half of the voting power which is not the case here you are not supposed to consolidate it right. So practical control does not necessarily matter. What also matters is that the definition as per the law has to be satisfied. 
right? I hope you would have understood the meaning of control and this is relevant for consolidated financial statements.